All right, before I get into this review, there's just something I gotta say. Come here. Welcome back to Halloween in the Middle, everybody. Today, our movie in the middle is Terrifier 3. Terrifier 3 picks up five years from the previous film following Sienna and Jonathan as they once again try to kill Art the Clown and his new sidekick Vicky, who have taken a massacring for the holidays. It stars David Howard Thornton, Lauren Lavera, Elliot Fulham, and Samantha Scafidi. So I had never heard of Terrifier until about a couple years ago, thanks to my aunt. She is uh, just a lover of well, horror in general, but particularly the really grindhouse, you know, like Saul slasher movies, B-horror movies, things like that. She loves all that stuff, and she's been introducing me to all of them. So I watched the first two, and my god, if this is not the goriest series I have ever seen in my life. But I can't say they're not good. But the thing is, is, you know, up to this point, I thought, all right, you know, like, it's, it's an indie slasher. No one really knows about it. No one's really gonna know about it. So when they came up with the third one and put the trailer out, I was like, oh, cool, you know, this is gonna be for all those people who are, like, really into this series, really deep down into it. Avid horror fans who love only the really gruesome shit. It'll probably have, like, a week or two release. It's not really gonna be, you know, marketed that much. You know, basically, you're, you're just average indie slasher. This movie came out and has just blown everybody away. I am just floored because now everybody seems to know that this movie and this trilogy exists, which I did not expect. This is a Christmas-based horror movie that is vile and depraved, and it's coming out right when all these other horror movies are coming out. And I didn't think a soul would know about it if they hadn't already known about the Terrifier series. But not only is it popular, and a lot of people are talking about it and going to see it, but it's getting not only good audience reviews, but good critical reviews. Actually, incredible reviews. Usually either the audience loves it because they just love this kind of stuff and the critics are like, ah, it's just another indulgent slasher fest. Or the other way around, where the, the, the critics are like, there's something here no one's understanding. It's really, really good. And the audience is like, yeah, it was, it was fine. Both of them love it. And the craziest thing about all of this is that it came out right at the same time Joker Folia Dew came out. And people have already made the observation that, yes, this is a clown versus clown weekend. And if you had told me a month ago that these two movies were going to come out at the same time, and you had asked me which one's going to do really, really well and which one's going to bomb, I would never in a million years have said what actually happened, which is that Terrifier 3 has actually beat out Joker. And it's probably a better Joker and Harley Quinn movie than the Joker and Harley Quinn movie that we got. There's no way for me to review this movie and say that I liked it without sounding like a complete maniac. However, that is what I am about to do. Let's just start off with the obvious. The kills in this movie are absolutely fucking insane. The kills in all the other ones are also insane, but this, I think, had the most and perhaps the goriest, if that is even possible. Now, I will say this. A lot of people were saying that this movie had a scene that's more shocking than the bedroom scene in Terrifier 2. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I don't want to tell you to go watch it, but maybe go watch it. I've never really been bothered by gore, because for me it's just like, okay, it's practical effects and all that. There's only ever been a couple scenes in movies that have really gotten to me, one of them being the degloving scene in Gerald's game. The bedroom scene in Terrifier 2 was for me the moment that I went, hmm, maybe there is a limit to how much gore can be in a movie, and maybe there's a point at which there's no purpose for the excess gore. It was pretty, it, it was, it was, ugh. so people were saying that this one, there was an even worse scene. I personally don't feel that there was, but there is a lot of shit that happens in this movie that I, I don't even have words for. So one of the highs is that the kills are very creative and, you know, entertaining. I mean, that's what we're there for. It's, it's entertaining. And you're like, oh my god. Guys, they do not hold back in this movie. There are maybe two lines that I can think of that they still have yet to cross. Everything else is fair game. 
They are not above certain things that I thought they would be. And along with that, Art the Clown just has to be solidified as one of the best slasher villains of all time. People love this character because he is quiet and the most demonic, depraved thing you've ever seen, and obviously very scary, but he's funny. He's entertaining. You forget that from one second to the next that he's just murdered so many people because now he's like doing all these gestures and bits that are really funny. So many people have gotten the tattoo of him wearing the sunglasses from the second movie. And I think that this movie, along with Vicky, who was in the first one and kind of in the second one and now in this one, who is just the creepiest thing I have ever seen. They have to be up there in, like, the greats now, like, of, of the new age of slashers and horrors. Also, this movie dares to have a story and to have heartfelt emotions. And it works. This actually happened in the second one as well, where they tried to put a story with it. And I didn't really buy it at first because at that point we only had one and two. One being its own separate thing, introducing Art the Clown. There's only really one character that carries over aside from Art. And it's just sort of its own smaller indie movie. And then in the second one, they tried to give more of a story, more lore, more like like the, the sword, these artifacts. And I was like, I don't, I don't really buy it. The kills are great. And the second one was really great, but I don't really buy it. This one actually did the thing where instead of adding lore to it, and I just think, can we just please get away from this? I get it now. Because originally I thought that Art the Clown was a human. And then very clearly after the second one, he's, he's not. He is very much a demon. And so adding all of this other stuff in with the sword and all this lore and everything and, and now there's more that we find out in this one and not to have a spoiler alert but there is going to be a fourth one so there's going to be even more to come i'm actually very excited about this now where this is going to go i kind of think of it now as the first one is like an ep its own separate thing what you're you're introducing what your sound is and then the second one this one and the next one will be sort of a trilogy kind of the albums, telling an actual story. This is really where you get to the meat and potatoes of everything that you're trying to get to. And so, yeah, I, I really love the story in this one, the emotions. I love the characters. Just as Art has been solidified as one of the best slashers, I think Sienna has to be up there as one of the best and most badass final girls we have ever had. She is probably right up there for me as one of the top final girls, along with Sydney from screen. And of course, the fact that it, it's set at Christmas. At first, I thought, why aren't you going to put it out at Christmas? But I think this would have been kind of a downer. But it does give a really interesting vibe to the movie, a very interesting setting. There's not a lot of Christmas like horror movies in general. So it's cool to add one of those. And it just gave it this whole layer that it didn't really have to, but it makes it that much more shocking when things happen because you're like, come on, at, at Christmas? I don't really have any lows, particularly with the movie, but I'm going to say this is going to be a middle. Mostly it's just, I just want to prepare you guys if you're going to go see this. Obviously, if you're going to see Terrifier 3, you have probably already seen Terrifier 1 or 2 or both. And you know what you're getting into, especially because people have been saying that audience members are throwing up and passing out and leaving this movie. And that is true. That's not even an exaggeration. Most of it is pretty, you know, what you're expecting. Really, really rough kills. But at the end of the day, it still looks like practical effects. It still looks like really good practical effects. But it's, it's easy to be like, all right, this isn't like superbly real. There are a couple things that for me almost got to me or could get to a lot of other people. There's one thing in particular that I did not expect to be in the movie. There is one scene that involves self-harm. So I just want to put that out there, you know, just, just in case um, anybody would have any problems with that particularly. And then there's another thing that is basically the line that they cross in this one I did not think that they would cross. It comes up really in like two or three scenes, particularly a scene in the beginning and a scene in the middle at a mall. Had it gone a different way in that middle scene, I may have left the movie. It would have been much more upsetting if they had gone a little bit more visual with what they did. They didn't. So if you can stand what happens in the beginning of the movie, you'll be fine the rest of the time. Because, and without giving too much away, basically what I'm trying to get at is there are some things that they are not willing, at least in this movie, to do on screen. 
So overall, I was not going to do a review for this. I was going to do a short and just be like, you know, this for anybody who actually watches Terrifier, this is what I thought really quick. But it's gotten so big and so popular, I figured I may as well because there's a lot of people who are watching this movie or want to watch this movie and they want to know what's it like. And I can tell you, if you're a Terrifier fan, you're going to freaking love this movie. It's insane. It's got probably the most amount of gore and just the craziest shit I've ever seen in a movie. But it's also entertaining and it's weird and it's it's fun and it's got good characters and it's got heart. And I love that the sibling relationship, there's so much that is actually really good about this movie. And I am really excited to see where it goes in the fourth one. This has absolutely solidified the Terrifier franchise as one of the best slasher series, one of the best recent ones and right up there with all of the other ones and congratulations to everybody who worked on it because your indie movie just beat out joker which is a big box office franchise movie that's amazing i'm gonna give terrifier 3 a 3.5 out of 4. i am also just on principle gonna give it the shell shocked award because i I mean, this is what this award is made for. Well, guys, let me know what you think of Terrifier 3 and what you think of the other ones. It's really unheard of that people would be over the moon about this movie as they are, but I, I'm not going to complain about it. And as always, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and Halloween right in the middle. I'll see you guys later.